Good evening. I call the uh, regular meeting to order at 6.15 and announce that the board met in closed session and that uh, there were no actions taken. Uh, today's meeting is being video recorded and will be available on the district's YouTube channel. There are also blue cards that are available at the table just outside the boardroom for anyone wishing to address the board. If you wish to address the board, complete a blue card and hand it to a staff member at the table to my right. Please be sure to complete the card indicating whether the matter you wish to address is on the agenda or not on the agenda. If the matter is on the agenda, we will assume you wish to speak when it comes time to address that item on the agenda and we will hold your card until then. Now we will begin our uh, meeting tonight as we always do with the Pledge of, of Allegiance and Ms. Bobby Singh Allen uh, will uh, read some nice words about our education partners. Excellent. Um, at this moment, I would like to call forward uh, Ms. Harjinder Dillon and Ms. Leah Biagiani. Did I say that correctly? How, how do you pronounce your last name? Bijani? Biagiani. All right. If you would like to come forward and you can bring your um, respective family members. And I would also call up uh, Principal Billy Eidlett. All right. Right over here. <laughs> All right, John Earhart Elementary School is honored to recognize Harjinder Dillon and Leah Biagiani. All right, as our education partners. Ms. Dillon and Mrs. Biagiani are loved for the countless hours they have served volunteering in the classrooms. They are outstanding role models for the students, staff, and the community of John Earhart Elementary. Ms. Dillon had retired from her teacher career with the Sacramento City Unified School District and began volunteering in Nancy Brown's first grade class in 2014. She is a longtime Elk Grove resident. She helps in several classrooms each day by supporting students in small groups, reinforcing their literacy skills, and providing individualized academic tutoring with warmth and a positive reinforcement. Mrs. Biagiani started volunteering one morning a week in Ms. Lanzarata's class over 10 years ago. She had so much fun that volunteering once a week became volunteering every day. Whoa. Ms. Biagiani spends her volunteer time helping students in small groups, supporting the academic and social growth for our students. She assists in making sure that Mrs. Lanzarata has everything organized to maximize her excellent instruction. A true champion of lifelong learning and education, even though she has nine children. Mrs. B went back to college at the age of 40. That's outstanding. John Earhart Elementary is blessed to have such dedicated community partners like Harjinder Dillon and Liz, Liz, Leah Biagiani. They are retired neighbors who are willing to give of their time and energy in service of our children. Thank you again to Ms. Dillon and Ms. Biagiani for all that you do. Lead us in our pledge. Either of you like to say anything, please feel free, and I'm going to meet you down for photos. I just want to thank Billy Eidlett for giving this great opportunity to serve the kids. I love kids, and what I'm doing is what I wanted to do after I retire. So it's great. Thank you. Well, I have to say, first off, about the pledge, I remember back when Under God was not part of that pl pledge. <laughs> That's how old I am. But I, if I didn't enjoy doing what I do, I wouldn't do it. But these kids, I get paid with hugs and kisses on a daily basis, and it makes it all worthwhile. Yep. Thank you. How about another round?
Thank you. Okay, as we uh, begin our new school year, 2017-18 school year, uh, we have the, the wonderful privilege of having student representatives give us reports. And uh, this year's kickoff will be given by Florin High School and Laguna Creek High School. So we'd like to have Florin High School begin. Good evening, President Forchina, members of the board, Superintendent Hoffman, and Ms. Avalos. My name is Mariana Sanchez, ASB President. And I am Michael Mendoza, ASB Vice President. It is our honor to be here tonight representing Florin High School. First, we would like to thank the board for the renovations that are underway at our school. Painters and roofers have been working since the summer, and construction crews recently broke ground on our new all-weather track and field. We have seen a positive impact it has on our students and staff. The start of the new school year has been terrific so far. The atmosphere at Florin High School is filled with spirit and joy. Our annual back to school night was held on August 17th. Families attended a welcome back orientation, were able to visit their students' teachers, and eat a barbecued hamburger dinner for only $2. The following evening, ASB held their color splash dance in the school quad. Free admission was offered to all students with academic achievements such as James Redder Middle School Honor Roll, FHS Honor Roll, a met or exceeded standards on the SBAC, or a passing score on the AP test. The evening was filled with enjoyable music and color clouds all around. Students left with bright smiles and multicolored faces. Seniors kicked off their final year in style by declaring August 18th as Senior Royalty Crown Day. Members of the class of 2018 were given crowns that they were able to personally decorate, and if they wore them to school, they were given a special treat. The class of 2018 will wear their crowns on the 18th of every month in anticipation of graduation. Tomorrow, September 6th, is our senior picnic, where the graduating class will participate in team games and competitions throughout the day to bond and make special memories. All clubs and organizations participated in this year's club rush on August 24th and 25th. Students, especially freshmen, were able to get information about all the different ways to connect to Florin High School. Our first food fair of the year was the following Friday, and many of those same clubs sold delicious snacks and treats to our students at lunch. It was definitely a day to have saved your appetite for. On Friday, September 1st, ASB celebrated National College Colors Day during lunch. College-themed games and activities, such as Jumbo Jenga and Beanbag Toss, were available for students to play. In addition, badminton, giant checkers, Jumbo Connect 4, and even musical chairs were set up in the quad. What a great way to make the school hours even more entertaining. On the same day, the seniors who had taken the SBAC test last year and met or exceeded standards on one or both subjects received a raffle ticket and a goodie bag filled with treats. The winning raffle ticket will receive an electronic tablet as a prize. This is a way to say thanks to this year's seniors for having an 18% increase in our percentage of our students who met or exceeded standards on the ELA portion of the SBAC. Assets. The after school program at Florin High School has returned to our campus this year, giving students opportunities to engage in extracurricular activities, including dance, tutoring, culinary arts, basketball, sports and fitness, color guard, and so much more. It is a great way for students to spend their time productively every day. In Academy News, last week, Law Academy went on their team building day at Elk Grove Regional Park. Students played volleyball, soccer, egg toss, and held a tug war between the grades and academy. It was a way to connect and meet the fellow students within the Law Academy. Ag Tech and FFA Academy held their annual picnic at Elk Grove Park as well. Students and teachers welcome incoming and former FFA members with the bonding activities and a barbecue. Our football team defeated San Juan High School 30-6 in their first game of the season on Saturday. And after seven-year hiatus, Florin High women's golf is back on the map with a strong showing at the Lauren Roberts Tournament and a Metro League victory over Sac High. Women's tennis has also started the year strong with a 2-0 record. For their first league game is today against McClatchy High School. 
Additionally, our women's volleyball team is currently undefeated, and many would say that they are poised for a strong run for league, cha league championships. This week is our homecoming assembly. The theme this year is major cities, with the freshmen claiming Motown, sophomores with San Francisco, juniors with Los Angeles, and the seniors with New York City. Next week will be our homecoming game against Franklin High School from Stockton, California. We can't wait to cheer on our team for the win. Next Wednesday is our powder puff game. We are ready to see if Coach Cronin with the sophomore and junior team can go up against Coach Cooper with the freshmen and seniors. This event will be held at the Mark Macris Memorial Studium Stadium on September 13th at 6.30 p.m. We proudly invite you, to invite you all to these upcoming events. Here to end us off, you know, and I know, that, that every, every day, day is, is a great, great day, day to be a, be a Panther. Panther. <laughs> Thank you, Florin High School. Okay, Laguna Creek High School. Good evening, President Porcina members of the board, Superintendent Hoffman, and Ms. Avalos. My name is Jared Husing. And I'm Haley Rankin, and we are pleased to be here to tell you all the exciting things that have been happening at Laguna Creek this past month. To start off, Laguna just hosted its annual club rush, and the turnout was amazing. Lots of new clubs were introduced this year, one of the most popular ones being the Positive Impact Club. Over 200 people signed up, and the overall goal of the club is to help dogs. They will be raising awareness for adoption and helping out at a local shelter. Kenzie Mao, the president and founder of this club, also wanted to create a way for students to get connected with the school. Another club that has always been popular is Poly Club. They too got hundreds of signups and are excited to perform later on this year for the Multicultural Assembly. The Sports Career Academy, SCA, recently took their annual lake trip. Both teachers and students had tons of fun working on team bonding and getting to take a dip in the cool lake. SCA has also started signups for internships with Dignity Health for the upcoming year. 40 people are a part of the program this year. Host, oh sorry, excuse me. This is also SCA's second year of having the program Future Health Professionals HOSA at our school. 40 people are a part of the program this year. HOSA helps students pursue their dreams of going into the medical field and they offer a wide variety of careers from forensics to first aid. Laguna's Manufacturing Production Technology Academy, MPTA, recently worked on many homes for veterans. They have completed one and are finishing the second one. Link Crew kicked off back to school activities with freshman orientation. Games were played, friends were made, and most importantly, the new kids on campus came to know that the leaders have their back as a new chapter in their life begins. Seniors began their last year of high school at Senior Sunrise, which I might add was earlier than preferred, but why not celebrate the beginning of the end? There they enjoyed eating donuts, drinking milk and orange juice, all while watching the sunrise. A raffle was held, providing the lucky few with all dance passes and even the more, exclu or e and even the mo more exclusive senior ball tickets. About an hour later, our campus filled up with bands and cheerleaders, welcoming everybody back to Laguna Creek. ASB members arrived early to stand out in front of the school and wave flags to show our cardinal spirit. Link Crew leaders were wearing their bright blue shirts in order for the incoming freshmen to easily find someone to help them find their newly acquired classes. Laguna then had its first rally a week later. Having been Guardians of the Galaxy themed, each class was assigned a character from the film. The seniors were finally able to yell senior chants in excitement after waiting three long years for the opportunity to do so. Later that night, Link Crew held a freshman barbecue for Link leaders and their freshmen to connect over hot dogs, music, and volleyball. Once over, everybody walked over to the gym and kept the party going during our back-to-school dance. Hundreds of students attended to hang out with friends, utilize the picture booth, and most importantly, dance to music. With, with the recent solar eclipse, ASB made plenty of posters and even brought out the sound system to play sun or star theme music. Most classes were allowed to come outside and view the rare astronomical event using various methods. We then held our annual movie night where we had more than 500 students attend this year. All brought blankets, chairs, and food to enjoy, all while watching the, lady, the latest Guardians of the Galaxy. Last Friday, we held our semester's annual Renaissance barbecue to reward those with a 3.0 GPA or higher. 
Students who qualified received a hot dog and a bag of chips. Lastly, with the construction of our new all-weather track and field, ASB provided the construction crew with the lunch as well to recognize their hard work in this record-breaking heat wave. Fall sports have also been working hard in conditioning in, the, in their preseason games. Cross country has been conditioning hard to prepare for their season. Girls volleyball just played Franklin in a foundation game. Our Lady Cardinals fought hard and took the Wildcats to five sets. This past Friday, football also played Franklin. It was a hard fought match and was very fun to watch. Girls golf has also begun. They've only had one match so far, but hope to have a successful season. Boys and girls water polo has been working hard too. They have a tournament coming up soon and both teams are excited to compete and hope to go far in it. Finally, girls tennis has been busy lately. They played in the Best of Sacramento Showcase Tournament and have also played Oak Ridge in a preseason game. As the school year is still young, there is plenty of more to come. As of right now, thank you for your time and we both look forward to presenting to you again soon. Thank you, nice report. <laughs> We'd also like to uh, recognize Ms. Uh, Denise Escobar, Principal, Florin High School, and uh, Doug Craig, Principal, Laguna Creek High School. All right, thank you, students. Uh, you are welcome to join us, or you can leave at your pleasure, and we'll see you later in the year. Thank you. All right, we have two resolutions tonight, and I call on Mr. Mark uh, Cerruti. First one will be Constitution Day and Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you, President Forchina, members of the board, Superintendent Hoffman and Ms. Avalos. The Board of Education has requested to adopt resolution number 10 that designates September 17th, 2017 as Constitution Day. Since September 17th, 2017 falls on a Sunday this year, the district will observe Constitution Day on Monday the 18th. September 17th, 2017 will be the 230th anniversary of the formation and signing of the Constitution of the United States. In 2004, Congress created a federal holiday, Constitution Day, designated to be September 17th. In May 2005, the U.S. Department of Education stipulated that all schools that receive federal monies must hold an educational program pertaining to the United States Constitution on September 17th of each year. Through this resolution, the Board of Education will communicate a clear message about the importance of our country's foundational governing document, as well as the importance of civic values. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to uh, call for a motion to adopt resolution number 10, designates uh, September 17th as Constitution Day, and we will observe it on Monday, September 18th. So moved. Moved by Ms. Singh Allen, second by uh, Mr. Perez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. It passes. Thank you. And your next one. The next is Hispanic Heritage Month. The Board of Education is requested to adopt resolution number 11 that designates September 15th through October 15th, 2017 as Hispanic Heritage Month. The Board of Education has been a strong advocate of diversity within our school district. In September 1968, Congress authorized President Lyndon Johnson to proclaim National, His National Hispanic Heritage Week. The observance was expanded in 1988 to a month long celebration. Throughout the year, the contributions of Americans with Hispanic heritage are presented in the regular curriculum. However, this special focus for one month serves as a reminder of the combined contributions of this group. Thank you. Call for motion to adopt resolution number 11, designates uh, September 15th through October 15th as Hispanic Heritage Month. So moved. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, have, we have a motion by Ms. Chiris Espinosa, second by Mr. Perez. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. passes, thank you. All right, um, next item is requests for return from student expulsion, and I would uh, like to uh, have a motion to approve the readmission committee's recommendations for students returning from expulsions. Moved by Ms. Singh Allen, second. second by Mr. Madison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Passes, thank you. All right, now public comment. We have uh, one blue card, and it's a pleasure to call on Mr. Pat Hume. 
<laughs> Council member. Good evening, uh, members of the board. Pleasure to be before you, uh, Superintendent Hoffman and Ms. Avalos. Uh, I'm here on a quasi-official uh, duty as a council member, but more as a resident of the, the wonderful city and as a member of, of your district. Two things that I'd like to ask uh, some assistance on. Uh, the first is, uh, we all know what a wonderful job those goats did of uh, eating down the vegetation <laughs> in the creeks and provided a great uh, family entertainment for folks that got out and, and enjoyed that. However, uh, they did such a good job that they've now revealed all of the trash that remains uh, within those creekways. So on September 30th uh, of this month, which would be why it's September 30th, I suppose, um, I'm organizing a creek cleanup day to uh, essentially start at Markoffer Elementary School and go to the fire department or farther if, as time allows, uh, do it from 9 to 11 in the morning. And the reason I'm here before you is I'd like to ask for your assistance in putting it on the students' radars uh, for community service hours. So I know I've spoken offline with you, uh, Trustee Singh Allen and uh, Trustee Albiani. I believe our districts overlap, so I'd like to invite you to become involved. But basically, I'm just asking for your help of how do I get the exposure out to some kids who need to get out and do some community service. I think it's a great way to get outdoors a couple hours on a Saturday and we'll be able to knock it out and make a difference. Second thing that I'm here for uh, this evening, and I would like to claim this idea as my own because I think it's brilliant, but it was actually brought to me by former uh, Community Services District Director Elaine Wright. Picture in your mind the east side of the Joseph Kerr Science Building, the two-story building, the only building remaining from the beautiful high school that once sat on that site. Uh, they determined those windows uh, at some point were not needed to be used. They were boarded up. They've been stuccoed over. Now they make perfect canvases for murals. And so her idea was to uh, look at taking each of those windows and painting some sort of mural in that. I think there's two ways we could go with this. We could either offer it up as a student competition that uh, students would compete to have their murals chosen to be on the side of that building for a period, say a year or whatever, or we could uh, do it in tandem with the city's uh, arts commission and open it up to more professional muralists um, that still could be on a rotating basis. You know, I mean, not even a bucket of paint would probably co color all those windows again. So um, obviously that would need your blessing, but I'm happy to offer my uh, assistance in any way I can. Thank you. Um, we won't get into all the particulars in terms of, of how help might be given, but, but when you are through, I would like to ask Mr. Rob Pierce and Ms. Santi Pinkerton both to meet, they can meet with you outside and, and look at process. All right. Great. Thank you. That's, they're both great. Go, Thank both you. Both good causes. Thank you, Pat. Great evening. Well, I'm going to butcher it. Um, I have a second card, and per perhaps, uh, Danessa, you can help me with your last name. Okay. We were okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Danessa Tilles uh, is the second uh, person wishing to address the board, and you have three minutes. This is my first school board meeting. It's very exciting. You guys have a nice place up there. Um, I'm a constituent. I live in Laguna West, and I have a child that attends Harriet Eddy, and um, I also have a daughter that attends uh, Prairie, which is not in Elk Grove, but still in the district. And um, I, I addressed the city council a couple of weeks ago in regards to this issue, and you guys may or may not have known about this, but I asked the city council to uh, make a recommendation to the school board about amending the school district's policy on wearing paraphernalia that elicits, um, that espouses hate speech, um, in my opinion, and they declined to do so. However, um, Councilwoman Stephanie Nguyen, um, she is late, but she was planning to attend um, to support my, my asking that the school board um, update or consider reviewing their policy on that. I was reviewing your handbook and you don't have any specific policies regarding the dress code, it looks like, in the overall district handbook. I'm sure individual schools do have one. Um, but in light of the situation that occurred at the beginning of August with um, a young man wearing a Confederate flag on his backpack and it drawing some um, you know, criticism throughout the community and getting some media coverage. Um, there was an article posted in the Elk Grove Citizen where one of the board members said that it's just out of the policy unless it can creates a disturbance for it to be addressed. And I would like to posit that 
it would create a disturbance whether or not it's addressed by a student, um, a, a student that sees a Confederate flag, or if a, another student was wearing, for instance, a swastika or some other Nazi paraphernalia, um, whether or not they feel comfortable or safe to say something, it's still creating a disturbance, even if to an individual student. And I feel like um, that is something that should be addressed at a district-wide level and not just an individual school level. There should be some sort of policy specifically banning things that elicit a um, discriminatory response, which I think falls under your bullying policy. Um, and you also have like a zero tolerance policy. There are a couple policies I feel like it could fall under and I'd be happy to draft something if you guys would like to consider it. But I'm specifically as asking for the board to um, ban or disallow the use of uh, Confederate flags and Nazi symbols and paraphernalia in any form district-wide on school campuses. Thank you. Uh, we, we cannot uh, engage in, in discussion with you uh, on a non-agendized item. Um, our district uh, has put out uh, numerous communications with respect to our various policies. And uh, if uh, I would like to ask once again uh, either Mr. Mark Cerruti uh, to meet with you uh, when you're done with your comments and he can share where the district is and uh, if there is information that should be forthcoming, then he can share with you what process would look like for that. Thank you very Thank you. much. Okay, next item's a consent agenda, and I call Ms. Chavez Espinosa. Mr. President, I call uh, from, well, I move for approval for items 1 through 24 of the consent agenda. Okay, we have, she moves uh, approval of the, the, the consent agenda, and need a second? Right here. Mr. Perez, and... Uh, I, I like to, if I can, abstain from item 23. Okay. Can you number twenty three? Number twenty three. Excuse me, I, I, I'm having I'm having a problem, and if you'll hold one second, please, Crystal, because I want to. Uh, technical problem. I'm having technical problems, Mr. Mate. Okay, here we go. We're getting there. Okay. Okay. Now, what numbers did you want to have full? Just twenty three. Just twenty three. Abstain from that. I'm just abstaining. Okay, um, then uh, we have a uh, revised motion, be items uh, 1 through 24, absent 23. No, she's not pulling it. She's oh. just abstaining from that one. Oh, you're abstaining. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Okay, then we have a motion. Second, Mr. Perez, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Passes. Thank you. Okay, tonight there is no LCAP report. There is no budget update, no facilities update, bargaining units. Do any of you wish to speak? None. Okay, no reports. No public hearing action items. No discussion items. Look at him. He's already ready. We will move into discussion action items and uh, call on Mr. Pierce. The first one is adopt resolution of intention to convey uh, um, property to County of Sacramento. Thank you, President Forchina, members of the board, Superintendent Hoffman, Ms. Avalos. Uh, we have actually granted a few easements here in the last several months. Uh, this is a cleanup of a project that's happening right now in the Florin area. Um, it's part of the Florin Creek Trail Bike and Pedestrian Improvement Project. And in the course of the city uh, performing the work, they realized that an area that would typically be um, granted to them by way of easement has not uh, been the case historically. So it is a portion of the sidewalk at the corner of Florin Mall Drive and Orange Avenue, which is at the, if I get this right, the southwest corner of William Daler Alternative High School. Um, as part of the improvement project, they're going to make not only roadway improvements, but also sidewalk improvements um, in the area. They are asking that we go ahead and grant the easements um, in, to their benefit so that they can perform the work and continue to maintain the areas um, over the course of time, which they've done historically. Um, technically, um, it should be granted by way of easement for them to do the maintenance. So um, we deem this as the best interest, um, not only for the district, um, but also for the County of Sacramento, as well as the public at large. 
Uh, this, this intention has been posted not only at William Daler, but the Southgate Community Library, as well as the Robert L. Trigg Education Center and published in the Sacramento Bee. Must be adopted by two thirds of the board for it to be effective. And should you adopt the resolution tonight, it'll come back before you September 19th for the actual conveyance of the easements. So two easements and one temporary construction easement is what's before you now. Um, no more than um, 700 square feet in all. Okay, questions, board members? Bobby, Crystal, Tony. Are they working on it now or it's finished? Um, they're, gonna, they're waiting until um, you do or don't take this action okay. and then they will be working on it. And uh, I know right there on the corner there's a daycare for students. Right. What's, what's, what's so th this actually will not impact any of the area um, that we currently occupy other than the sidewalk and the district actually owns a portion of what is currently the roadway. If you would extend um, Florin Mall Drive south right. to where it intersects with Orange Avenue. So it's a triangle of what looks like the roadway that we own and we're just granting a public roadway easement to the county. Um, but the sidewalk and that roadway is all that will be affected. It will not encroach onto our property um, where the daycare is. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm concerned about the daycare students during the construction. Oh. Is it going to be the, during the weekend or um, it, It'll be over the course of a week or two, but they'll make temporary measures that, for, okay. for this. Fine. Staff there. Okay. Nancy? Oh, I didn't have anything. Okay. Okay, then I call for a motion to adopt resolution nine, intention to convey a public roadway and public utilities easement, a public utilities and public facilities easement, and a temporary construction easement to Sacramento County on the southeast corner of William Daler Alternative High School. Moved by Mr. Madison, second by Ms. Alviani. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. It passes. And I'll remind everyone that a public hearing will be held at the regular board meeting on September 19th. All right, thank you. All right, now we have an action item. I call on Mr. David Riley. Resolution to eliminate classified positions. Yeah, now she, I can feel her watching. Good evening, President Fortuna, members of the board, Superintendent Hoffman, <laughs> Ms. Avalos. Jennifer. <laughs> Uh, the board is asked to adopt the attached resolution to eliminate classified positions due to lack of work, lack of funds pursuant to Ed Code sections 41114, 45298, 45306, and 45117. That's it. Okay. Any questions? Um, I would like to just uh, uh, confirm uh, issue. The positions have been eliminated. Uh, my understanding is that the people who had been in those positions were reclassified. They're in uh, positions that have higher level work. They're receiving higher level pay. Nobody's going to be on the street. Um, Nobody was negatively right. impacted. So no one's uh, impacted. So I call for a motion to adopt resolution 12 authorizing the governing board to eliminate classified positions. Moved by Ms. Singh Allen, second by Mr. Perez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Fun time here is Ewing, pupil textbook and instructional materials. Thank you. Good evening, <clears throat> President Fergina, members of the board. Superintendent Hoffman and Ms. Avalos. As you will recall, the Board of Education held a public hearing in accordance with Education Code 60119 regarding textbooks and instructional materials at the last board meeting on August 15th. Tonight I'm here to request the approval of Resolution Number 7, certifying that K-12 state instructional materials fund monies are expended in accordance with state law, ensuring that each pupil has sufficient textbooks or instructional materials in the Elk Grove Unified School District. Okay. Any questions on this? All right. Then I call for a resolution num uh, to approve uh, resolution number seven, certifying the Elk Grove Unified School District, District is in compliance with Education Code 60119, ensuring that each pupil has sufficient instructional materials. Moved by Mr. Madison, second by Ms. Albiani. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. It is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is board member of reports, and I know that there were some committee meetings. We'll start with Ms. Singh Allen. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I did attend uh, two by two with my colleague, Ms. Um, Chaitis Espinosa, 
the city of Sacramento, or sorry, city of Elk Grove's two by two, uh, where the mayor, and one of the council members was absent, city manager, and a number of other city staff. Uh, we had Rob Pierce attend, um, well, the superintendent and others. So just various discussion items um, on the agenda. I'll just highlight some of the ones that I was most interested in and that uh, I think were going really well and then perhaps um, my other colleagues can, or colleague can touch on some of the others. Um, one of the things that the city of Elk Grove is looking into is building a performing arts facility. Um, so it's in the very prelim early preliminary stages. So they wanted to get uh, sort of our feedback on that. Um, the other is the school resource officer update. I can tell you that um, on both sides of our parties, Elk Grove um, Unified School District and the city of Elk Grove, we're very pleased with that ongoing collaboration and communication that has enhanced uh, student safety. So we're very pleased with how that is going. The school traffic safety committee um, is going also very well. Um, so I think those were the main ones that I wanted to touch on. Uh, and also there's going to be some changes to transit. Uh, a couple of their routes are gonna have changes, so they're going to provide us with information to share with, uh, with our students and families uh, for those that would be impacted by the change route. So they'll work with, um, with Ms. Pinkerton on that. Uh, we also talked about, well, I'll, I'll let so that Ms. Shaitis Espinosa has mm -hmm. other points to bring up than just me, so okay, I'll question. leave it at that. Yeah, question. That, that makes two school resource officers that the city of Elk Grove funds and provides to Elk Grove Unified School District. Correct. For schools within the city of Elk Grove, correct? Mm -hmm. um, but they have responded to other needs outside yeah, of the boundaries. Primary. Um, Mr. Yeah. Hoffman, yeah, they actually have authority within the um, within our boundaries, so they oh. can help us anywhere um, within. Um, so it's actually worked out really, really well. They, we have them actually now um, east and west of the freeway is how we is how we distribute them, and, it, and it's working very well. Very good, thank you. Um, Crystal, Tony, I have a question regarding the transit bus. Yeah. Did they mention they're cutting back on bus service in, uh, to downtown Sacramento or internally? Um, I don't know what internally means, but what, what the change, there's going to be changes of, uh, on their route, is my understanding. What those routes and those changes are, I don't know. So they will share that um, with us before it takes effect. And I can't recall offhand, but I, I mean, there's a couple of months where well, Mr. Yeah. Hoffman we may we remember. We didn't get into the details, but it yeah. was what was approved in their, in their city council in the, meeting yeah. a few months ago. Okay. Do you know if they're going to expand services to downtown Sacramento? You know, if we didn't get into we didn't get into those details. details. I'm very concerned about the air quality on in South Sacramento because of congestion of the uh, on traffic on 99 Highway 5. That how that affects our st students within the schools that are by 99 and 5. The air quality in the Central Valley is getting bad. And okay. that's a big issue that... Okay, uh, Tony, Tony, no, 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 don't tell me to hold it. Tony, this, hold this it for item 17. You are off track. No, sir. Item I'm, 7, I'm, no. I'm, Items, okay. excuse me, item okay. 17. This is Air quality is important. not what we're talking about. But, we, were, but we need better transit fine. system uh, from uh, Elk Grove downtown. Tony, that's what I'm item talking. 17. Okay, all I'm doing is providing a report as my board member report. You can, you can Anything talk else it. you Just can have, until yeah. It's appropriate. Okay, what can okay. I talk about? Other items, from uh, the floor. other items from the floor. Okay, thank you. Nancy. So uh, my colleague Bobby Singh Allen did an excellent job giving a summary of the two by two with the city of Elk Grove. I'll just add that we did um, we did notice on both sides how much smoother the first day of school was and how traffic has been much better. Um, just really since in the past year, we've noticed a significant improvement on both sides. So a uh, testament to the benefits of our collaboration with the city. Um, I also attended our two by two with the Consumers Community Services District. Um, we had uh, Rod Brewer and Mr. Albiani on their side. Of course, the superintendent came along with us. Um, and we talked about uh, field allocation, which is something that we work together with them very closely year after year. Um, just check in on how that was going and next steps, things like that. Um, we talked about uh, hands-only CPR, which uh, was brought up by their side. There's an interest very preliminary 
on their end in expanding training, uh, particularly for adults. They were interested in making that available to some of our employees. We shared with them that um, as part of the changes in the curriculum that our students are actually going to be receiving that uh, and that many of our employees already do. Um, but of course, we, we welcome and appreciate more opportunities for community members to receive free training, which is what they're looking at developing. Um, we also did a quick follow-up on fire inspections, which um, got a little bit of press recently that um, the fire department was behind in either its doing of its doing the inspections of schools or in the documentation of, of those inspections. So they shared with us um, everything that they've done to come up to speed. Um, and we also shared with them that on our side, we are... Um, Although it's not what the statute requires, the statute requires them to do the inspections, we are doing a lot of that work also. So um, kids, kids are safe, it's the moral of the story. Um, <laughs> lastly, we also did a check-in on our aquatic facilities. Uh, again, agreements that we have between the two organizations to meet each other's needs and how well that's working. And, and I think we confirmed towards the end of that that um, our current arrangements are, are serving us both well. Anything to add, Mr. Superintendent? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Chad? Yes? Oh, yeah. FNCSD? Chris? Okay. And I haven't had any committee meetings, so thank you. All right. Other items from the floor? <laughs> Tony. <laughs> okay. okay. Like I said, I'm very concerned about air quality in the Central Valley. I've been concerned about this all my life because of the fact that I didn't go to UCLA. Because of that one issue, is I can't span smog. So I ended up going to college in Northern California. The issue is that the air quality affects our students. We are getting Department of Health Services report the more higher incidence of asthma in Northern California. As a result of that, what I see every day on 99, when I used to work down, downtown, it one time took me 10 minutes, then at the end of my career, as a state worker working for the Department of Health Services, it took me almost an hour to get downtown. So the traffic situation is getting really bad. So I would like our, our representatives, two by two, to ask city council members and our and Mayor Lee, like, to what are they going to, what are they planning to do regarding air quality that affects our students in elementary, middle schools, and high schools within less than miles away from our 99 and Highway 5. Number two, the fire inspections. I worked or volunteered as a foreign resource conservation district a representative, board member, and I know that they, we own Elgro Water Services. And so uh, there are another uh, community agency who inspects fire hydrants. And they are an, an, an important uh, agency that we should be in contact with because the fact that they monitor the hydrants, they clean the hydrants, and they, they test the hydrants, fire hydrants that I'm talking about. And so, and, and they make sure there's enough pressure within the water services, within Elk Grove's uh, water services, that they have enough pressure in those hydrants, fire hydrants throughout the city and well, within the district of the fire department. So we also need to also meet with them to see, make sure that those fire hydrants within our boundaries within, within our county are working properly and, and are tested regularly besides the, the, the other district that you mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other items? I have one. You have one. Go. So just very quickly, today was a, a, a sad day for a lot of people um, who, who um, heard the news about the DACA Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program. Um, most likely being discontinued in six months. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to remind the, the kids, students, and the families that we serve that this board has made a commitment. Um, the poster's up there on the wall about our schools being safe zones. And what that really means is that we serve everybody. We don't care where you came from, if you came from anywhere else, um, you know, what your legal status is. And um, in this district, all of our students are welcome and we're eager and proud to have the privilege of serving you and educating you. Bobby. Um, just to follow up on Ms. Chaitis Espinosa, um, I do have some resources that I will forward to Mr. Hoffman. 
um, as part of the committee work that I did with the City of Sacramento. But there is an upcoming workshop on the 13th at the McGeorge School of Law that is free. Um, there's a number of uh, there's great information. So I'll send Mr. Hoffman in case anybody reaches out that we have information to share with our uh, respective communities. Thank you. Any others? And the meeting is adjourned at 7 p.m. Thank you.